Welcome back to Kingdom Tales. I'm Father Lee, and we're reading together from The Tales of the Resistance by David and Karen Maines. I think that people underestimate how important storytelling is. Think about all of the things that you know about your family and all of the things that you know about the schools where you go or the places where you live. All of the things that you've learned have been because people told you stories. Maybe they told you stories about their past. My girls love to ask stories about my past and my wife's past. They want to know all about the things that happened when we were their age. Maybe you're like that too. That's how we learn. We learn by telling stories. Stories have the power to change who we are. They help us to understand the world around us and stories like the kingdom tales, help us to understand who Jesus is, who we're supposed to be, and what it means to join him in the work of building and restoring his kingdom. Today's story is called The Most Beautiful Player of All. The Dagoda of the Enchanter loomed in the middle of Enchanted City, so that none would forget the watching eye of the fire wizard. Close by, and a happier place, was the Palace of Players. Here, the people of the city, filled with weariness and heart sickness, came and forgot for a time their pains and griefs and fears. Thespia stood in the wings of the stage, brushing her long and luxuriant hair. She was the most beautiful of all the players, and even now she could hear the house chanting her name, Thespia, we want Thespia. More suitors sought her hand, but she turned them all away. Flowers from the Dagoda, the assistant manager called. Thespia yawned and instructed for the gift to be delivered to her suite in the palace. Four minutes, four minutes, the callboy warned. Thespia straightened her gown and took one last look in the mirror. Through a crack in the thick velvet curtain, she could see the theater was full. It was almost time for the play to begin. Poor ones, poor, poor ones, forget for a while then home again to remember your empty half-lives. She whispered this hollow blessing over them. See you tonight, the lead actor shouted as he hurried to take his position. Quiet, warned the stage director, but Thespia wanted to protest to the actor then. She shrugged her shoulders and waited for that always thrill, the curtain rising, the stage filling with the sudden radiance of spotlights and then the sonorous voices of the trained players. She particularly loved tonight's play. The Return of the King had been banned for years, but recently several very old myth cycles had been restored to the palace repertoire. We need a king. Thespia quickly looked around as though the stagehands could hear her inmost mind. Treason, this thinking, she knew it. Careful, the most beautiful player of all would play a final role tied to a stake in Burning Place. The first rule all children of Enchanted City learned after branding was there is no such thing as a king, death to pretenders. Senseless, she thought, and looked around again. If there's no such thing as a king, then why such a fuss? The placards, the lecture, the propaganda song, no king, no king, the enchanter is the thing. Silence would have helped her to forget, but each protest made her wish all the more if only there was a real king. Three minutes, three minutes. As a lonely understudy, Thespia had determined to be the finest player in all Enchanted City. Unlike the other actresses who became arrogant and haughty and cut all ties with their past, Thespia perfected her art in the streets. She refused to become enamored with the sterile practice rooms, the posh living suites, and the luxuries of the palace of players. 
She bound up her flaxen hair with common cloth and walked the marketplace, listening to how real people spoke words. Often she went back to her own people, to Moiroxen where they lived, to the stacked hovels where she had been raised. There she carried old granny's burdens that weighed their bent backs double. She brought tidbits of food for the always hungry waifs. She wept when orphans were taken to the orphan keeper, and she felt the cold whistling through these always night lives and remembered what it was to never have enough fire or power. Their pain became her own and their small and meager joys as well. Because she did not despise them, she was loved, and it was they, the street people sitting on the gallery floor, who called her name. One night, one terrible night, her cousin's wee babe wriggled in agony in Thespia's arms while searchers hunted its mother, who was foraging in a city-edge workshift. It squinched up its tiny face, took a last long breath, and died. Shuddering with sobs, Thespia hid in a tower of the player's palace. How could she act the next night? Play the comic with this terrible knowledge that babies died who shouldn't die in Enchanted City. She grieved with new understanding. There was little that she or anyone could do. Placards in the tower proclaimed, It is forbidden to watch the day. Her bitter soul declared another ridiculous rule. I will watch the day, and if it slays me, then I'm slain. As the golden sun rose, burning her eyes with grandeur and casting a brilliance over enchanted city, Thespia thought she had never seen anything so beautiful. That moment of magnificent beauty marked her soul as truly as the branding iron had marked her body. There must be more, she thought. This beautiful light must mean there is a better life. This was the moment she resurrected whenever she stepped on stage, whether it be for ordinary performances or for gala premieres or for command entertainments at the Dakota. The light rising, shining gloriously over the city. That memory filled her with special power. In time, Thespia had become what she vowed to be, the greatest player of all. The simplest twist of her wrist, the motion of her hand, the arch of her eyebrows, one half turn of her slender waist left audiences amazed and delighted. Thespia took breaths to calm her familiar stage anxiety. Orchestra and beginners! There was a backstage scurry as actors and actresses took their positions. Stage left, stage center front, then a pounding, the one minute signal and the house lights dimmed, then a hush as the audience quieted and a lovely melody of an ancient hymn as violins began lilting their music. Thespia loved the words of the overture. Let us go down, go down, and clasp hands and breathe life, and taste the jagged edge of pain, and sing the songs of the better place, the better time, the better day. No wonder she had fallen in love. For too long, Thespia had watched the breakers cudgel men and women in Moiroxen. For too long, she had heard the chilling moan of naysayers in the wind of winter's night. Nay, 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 nay. Nothing can be done. Nothing will be done. Nay, nay, nay. Thespia had fallen hopelessly in love with the king. Oh, not the actor king, although he was handsome and her most ardent admirer but the mythical king of the play, the one who was strong but not brutal, the one who could laugh with joy and weep with freedom, who never leered at beautiful women, who told stories to children and gentled the fears of the old, whom the young men followed because he was the bravest of all, who found beauty in the ugly and whose very words spoke hope. So the flowers wilted, 
The love suits went unanswered, and Thespia convinced all in the Dagoda that she was passionately devoted to her art alone. And every time she acted in the return of the king, it was like falling in love all over again. Psst! Thespia! The prompter hissed. Entrance! She stepped onto the stage, her hair tumbling in the captured stage light, glowing like a halo. There was a gasp from the gallery and applause from the boxes. She closed her eyes and evoked the memory of the roseate sun, rising, rising, and stood shimmering beneath the overhead spotlights. Oh, we are mortals and have forgotten how to laugh who will show us where true laughter is hiding? Thespia's lashes glistened with tears because it was true. So true. Perhaps Thespia's power came from the gallery, from the men and women and children sitting on the floor and wearing ragged, tattered clothes. They too wondered where the laughter had gone. Most players acted to the boxes, to the rich patrons dripping with furs, sitting in plush chairs, their stomachs full. But Thespia? Thespia played to the floor, to the people. She looked at them with pity. Eager, the whole mob lifted their heads to the stage light, their mouths open, their eyes wide with wonder. Thespia loved to make them laugh loved their unsophisticated whooping and howling and floor pounding. She loved to make them weep, to spill the overflow of sorrow that became damned in the dark horrors of Enchanted City. Tonight, beyond the circle of reflected stage light, she thought she saw a man standing. But he was in the gallery shadow. Strange. Why don't the ushers have him sit or leave? Two stage beats, a pause. At this moment, the actor King stepped from the wing. This was one of the play's most dramatic moments, the actual return of the king, but suddenly the lights flickered and dimmed. A groan went up from the theater. Power out, oh, power out. Even the players on stage moaned. Lights, 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 shouted the street people. Doesn't anything ever work in this wretched city? In dismay, Thespia realized she had spoken aloud. The actor king leaned in close to her. Careful, rumors say there's revolt afoot. But then Thespia realized that a light was shining in the darkened auditorium. The man she had seen in the gallery shadow seemed to be standing in his own light. She gasped and took a closer look. He seemed vaguely familiar. From the back of the hall, he raised his hand in greeting. Shyly, hardly realizing she did so, she reached out her hand toward him. And the theater quieted as all watched the man walk within a center of radiance to the orchestra pit. He perched upon the rim, apologizing to the musicians, and vaulted up to the stage. This is where I make my entrance, I believe, he said, and his voice was wonderful, filled with the echo of faraway hills and laughing country streams. He stood in the middle of the stage and held out strong arms. There is a real kingdom, he announced, and a real king. Without knowing that they moved, all the players took one step closer to his warmth. Some in the gallery rose to their knees. The man motioned to the conductor. 
music, he said, and the orchestra began to play up-tempo. The beat quickened in the percussion section and wound its way in and out amongst the street people whose feet began to tap. In the kingdom of light there is no night. And the man smiled at the gallery. At all in the boxes and at the players on stage, the beat waltzed its way up to the tiers of boxes, and even a few of the wealthy patrons began to clap. In the kingdom of light, the man chanted, the day shines bright. The music was infectious. Now many chanted back, in the kingdom of light, the day shines bright. Played the orchestra. The man raised his hands for quieter music. Have you ever heard of a kingdom where outcasts are welcomed? The man asked, and the people answered, No! Have you ever heard of a kingdom where every orphan has a home? No! Or where those who loved light could live in it? Or where those who sought a king found him? The man lowered his voice to a stage whisper, and the whole audience leaned forward to hear. In the kingdom of light, everything's right. Oh, sighed the whole house. And for a moment, everyone in the audience knew this was no play. No myth cycle dragged out of the palace archives. Sighed the gallery again, a long sigh. If only there were such a place, such a real place. The man offered his arm to the actor king standing on one side of him and his other arm to Thespia, who also stood near. She looked out on the audience and gasped. The people in the gallery were clothed in warm garments, their runny sores healed. They were clean and healthy. This couldn't be true. She blinked her eyes and stared again and realized she was seeing the people through the glow of this man's light. Tears ran down her cheeks. Real tears, not players' tears. If it could only be. If there really were such a place. Who are you? She asked, and he answered, you know who I am. Sobs broke her words, but how do we find the kingdom which you speak? He turned, took both her hands in one hand and wiped away her tears. The other players gathered close and one put his arm around Thespia's shoulder to comfort her. Follow me, said the man. The real kingdom is wherever I walk and whenever anyone walks with me. Thespia knew. He was wearing common clothes, the plain garments of the people, but she wanted to fall at his feet and bow. Tears blurring her vision, she turned from the man facing the audience and walked to the edge of the stage. She turned one hand to him and one hand to the gallery as if in introduction. The king, she said, my lord, the people. Suddenly, the lights blinked off on and man-made power was coming back up. Someone in the boxes shouted, There's no such thing as a king! Death to pretenders! And several began to chant, Death! 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 The orchestra stopped playing, and all the notes jumbled together and fell in a heap, and the man-made power suddenly came fully on, and the lights blazed forth. The audience shifted in their seats, patting their clothes straight. What a strange play! It must be intermission, but... Well, all these old myth cycles were odd. They stood to stretch, and the magical moment was gone. And the players exited and tried to remember what lines had been said and what lines remained to be said and who had the last cue. And the stage director didn't know which act to call next, but Thespia stayed beside the man who was buttoning his coat as though he meant to go. 
Are you leaving? she asked. Yes, the moment for believing is gone. She held her breath. Can, can I come with you? He bowed and took her hand and kissed it. And then he helped her climb as gracefully as possible over the orchestra pit, and they walked down the aisle and left the theater together. And very few seemed to see them go. And Thespia became a street player in the back alleys and dead ends of Enchanted City, acting out the king's story in such a way that all who saw her suspected, then hoped, that there was a real kingdom. Like the king, she worked in common clothes, and she never gave the luxuries of the palace a backward glance. Because when one has found one's real love, it's easy to leave what has only been pretend.